bitches and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a witch's moon box unboxing. So if that is something that you guys are interested in, just keep on watching. Hello my witches and welcome back to my channel. Like I said in my intro, obviously. Uh, today's video is going to be the witch's moon um, unboxing. I know I've said before that these, with, these don't do very well on my channel lately. But I thought I would still share it with you guys. This box is amazing. Like, I absolutely love this box. What is in this box is so cool. It is just cool. Um, and so I had to share it uh, on YouTube. I'm going to make this also into an IGTV. So if that's something you guys are interested in, just head over to Instagram. Um, I will put my Instagram name. It's just the same name as what I have here. Um... On YouTube but I will try to link it this time I don't think I've, I've tried to link it before I don't think it actually linked so anyways this is September's witch's moon box it is called the witch's call so it is really cool I will show you as always on top pamphlet this is our Oracle card you get a spell card and artwork always on top of your box like in the top but on top um I love it I will show you these after I show you what is in the box because what's in the box goes with the artwork and the spell so it'll be all coming just gotta wait and bear with me um but our oracle card it says the diamond star and it says destiny I focus on service and follow my higher purpose this is what it looks like. It is very beautiful. Um, I don't know the name of the, the Oracle deck yet, but pamphlet. I will let you know. It is the Star Temple Oracle deck by Susie Cherub. And it says this card and message that it holds was meant for you. Take the time to reflect on the wisdom that it holds. Let it resonate with you and speak to the pressing realities in your world. It is a beautiful card. I think I want to look more into this deck so that way I can have a better understanding of this card. Um, but it's a very pretty card. If you can see um, the individual cards, I will set on my altar for a little bit of time, depending on how I'm feeling and then like the meaning of the card. Sometimes I leave them up on my altar all like forever. Sometimes I will take them down and like shuffle the cards that I have gotten from the Witch's Moon and pick cards to put up on my altar. But this is a beautiful card and I would like to know more about this card before I decide what I'm gonna do with it. So when you open your box, I've never actually showed, this is what it looks like when you get it. I have opened mine, I've taken some things and moved them around, but you open the tissue paper and everything is inside. I've taken, I've taken my oil out of its packaging but everything else is still in the way that it came. So we're going to take out the big black box because this is the coolest thing. I normally save these for last, but this is so cool. I have to share it first. When you open it, I wish I had like had editing skills that I can be like, oh, because it's so cool. It is a bell and it is just really cool like look at how cool that is i will take close-ups and put it um in at the end of the video just so you know but listen beautiful sounding bell just a beautiful bell i love it i love it um so that is what is in this box that like you get it and you're just like okay I'm done. I, I'm just, it's beautiful. Uh, so the bell is a custom handmade pentacle witch's bell. And it says it has been such an honor to work with on the creation of a custom bell, relying on intuitive energies and spiritual guides to direct us. The ringing of the bell dates back to four, back almost 4,000 years, communicating messages over a long distance and symbolizing power and status commonly said to have begun in ancient China and slowly seeping into the roots of religions such as Buddhism, Hindu, Shinto, and etc. The bell transitioned into a known tool 
for communication and slowly started to appear in the creation of transformative music. Very often the bell is associated with the same qualities as the Tibetan singing bowl and can be used in similar pur for similar purposes. The ringing of great bells still catches the attention of those that are near, sparking interest and curiosity. Within witchcraft, these basic principles of communication still apply, yet work to connect and notify spirits that are commonly attracted to those that may have been more in tune within the spiritual realm. Although bells have been have always been on on or near altars, we always look to add new vibrations to our collection. So before I finish reading this, we've gotten this bell from the witch's moon before. Completely different sounds, just I liked sometimes okay, this is totally off topic. Not off topic, but when I sometimes want to cleanse my altar, if I don't feel like using actual stuff to cleanse the actual surface and the area, sometimes I don't want to use um, sage or Palo Santo. I don't really use Palo Santo anymore. Um, I only use what I have left. I'm also Native American, um, but I do have um, a little bit of white sage, not much left. Um, anyways, I will use a bell. That's where I was going. I'll use a bell to cleanse my altar, um, my space. Sometimes I'll walk through the house and I'll just ring my bell throughout the house. My kids are like, will you stop doing that? But bells are really good for cleansing and clearing space. Trust me on that. If you're a very intuitive person and you can kind of connect with spirits and stuff, bells clear spaces. Um, and I like, I like that. I like that. Okay, so there's a lot of information about bells and I will read it to you guys because we don't have a whole lot in the box other than the bell. Um, okay, providing us with an array of, okay, we're always looking to add new vibrations to our collection, providing us with an array of energetic tools that may strike a different essence with each ring. Associated with divine source of creation, the bell resonates with the goddess and is used to invite the, these powerful energies into our rituals and sacred spaces. Calling upon the elementals, watchers, and spirit guides are only a small part of many uses of the sacred bell. A very programmable tool. The witch's bell is used to clear away negative energies by demanding that the space around you be pure and relevant to your intentions. So that's what I was saying. Like you can clear your space if you feel like the negativity. So like for me, sage or any like white sage, other types of sage can clear energy, but it also can remove good energy. Um, and so that's why I like ringing the bell because you can make sure like you are programming that tool to work for you and what you need. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, it says the ringing of the bell can also call upon angels, spirit guides, ethereal energies, and other entities that you may wish to assist you in your work and spiritual development. Most importantly, the witch's bell is a tool to communicate a message and exclaim your true purpose to those that may be seen on the physical realm or within the hidden realms that exist around you. Sitting atop the handle of this bell is a representation of the great talons providing reassurance of the safe passage Sorry, I have like a wig hair stuck to my lip. I haven't even worn my wig today. As we include the pentacle on the front of this bell, symbolizing the power and protection, as well as being recognized as one of the most relevant and meaningful symbols in the spirit work, spirit work and communication, as well as any, as with any energetic tool, we recommend taking your time while working to familiarize yourself with the properties and attributes. Excuse me, I just burped. <laughs> so, now with that being said, then you have the artwork of the bell for your spell, um, for your grimoire, for your book of shadows, or wherever you would like to put these. So, like, as you can see behind me, this is an artwork from one of the witch's uh, moon boxes. It is my runes. Um, underneath my hat, my hat. I have my runes, I have a tarot deck, um, but I love the Witch's Moon's artwork. 
these are just they're all done by A.E. Alden they're just beautiful beautiful um if you could ever get yourself a box because I know they have cut off subscriptions um I think to a certain point if you could ever get your hands because sometimes they have people cancel or they have extra boxes made get them because these boxes are so worth it but I love the artwork and so this is also the spell that you get and I will put a close-up of it at the end so that way it's not so far apart and you're like straining to see um but it is ringing of the bells talks about um it is done also by A.E. Alden and G. Ibis um where is it so this is a siren of spirits incantation spell that's what incantation means you know spell uh, but it's a Book of Shadows artwork, so you can put this actually in your Book of Shadows. I have been collecting the basically all these little spells since they um, transferred over to this. Uh, if you go look in my cabinet, this is going to be a long video, I am sorry. In my cabinet over here, um, I've got a bunch of candles that I have not used yet from The Witch's Moon, and they, some of them have still have the spells wrapped around them. I really like that they went and did this. I think I've talked about this before, but I really like that they did this. So that way you can save these and you don't have to burn them. And with that spell, of course, you have a candle, which I have not opened yet, so I have no idea what the color is. Um, but we shall see together. Ah, it is black. Is it? It's either a black or a dark navy but I can't tell I'm assuming it is black it is a power and protection spell candle so it's black we have hand rolled this spell candle with the intentions of enhancing the magic that flows through you and your sacred space the energetic properties that you have been placed that that you have that have been placed within this candle were carefully selected to create a barrier between the ritual your rituals and those that wish to disturb it we always recommend being comfortable within your space so that you may speak words clearly out loud enhancing your int intentional energy as the flame of this candle dances before you take the time to clear your thoughts and ease your emotions we have enchanted this candle with the oils of frankincense and myrrh if you're unable to use a candle holder that might fit this candle place over a plate or offering dish in which you can burn the candle placing the flame to the bottom of the candle allow the wax from the to form a puddle quickly place the candle in the upright position in the middle of the puddle and hold it for a few seconds this technique will allow you to burn your candle on any surface never leave a candle un unattended that's a good tip i think they tell you that in every one but black candle protection we all love a good black candle. I use a lot of white candles for protection magic, but that one I will probably use tonight since it is the new moon. And I do have some intentions to do, but that is another video for another time. May make it after this one. We'll see. The next thing in here that's right in front of me is our crystal and it is hematite. And I have zero hematite in my collection. So this is pretty cool. I do not know the properties of hematite. I will read it for you because I've never had hematite. Um, it says to facilitate union between you and your spirit guides, we have included a tumbled hematite to accompany you on your path. In addition to spirit communication, we commonly use hematite to assist us in turning our intentions into physical and spiritual manifestations. Hematite can be stored with can also be stored with your divinatory tools to enhance their ability to communicate messages and signs to you throughout your practice. Use hematite to assist you through health, health, breath work, and, or times of needed meditation and grounding. It's pretty cool because I, I don't have any and I've never, never really been drawn to hematite. So this is good. Good to have. Um, we have some oil. I have not opened or smelled this. I do not know what it smells like. 
that smells really good. That's really good. I do not know how to say the name of this oil. It's A-E-G-I-S. I don't even want to butcher it, but I will show I will show you at the end, like when I do a close-up. It says we have created this magical anointing oil with the intention of providing you with a token of strength, courage, and protection as you travel into spiritual realms. The name I don't know how to say it was commonly referred to as a shield carried by by Athena, worn from within the passion of battle. It is said that the shield remains ageless and immortal and carried with it great magical properties. As you make candles, ritual tools, or create tinctures, visualize a wondrous shield of protection guarding you from any level of disruption that may have ill intent. We have enchanted this magical oil with frankincense, myrrh, and sandalwood oils, and it included clover, ground sage, lavender buds, and hyssop as well. Inside your oil, you will find a Lumerian quartz said to personify oneness within your aura. We have also included a special mixture of the great war magical oil from our personal cabinet of witchery into this mixture <laughs> of this oil. The base of this oil is sunflower oil. Some might be more sensitive than others in contact with skin. So it's a, it smells beautiful. Then we have our salt. It is Pulse of Peace Sacred Salt. This is a new little container. I can recognize that smell. It reminds me of something and I just don't know what it is. That is so weird. It smells familiar. Like it is giving me like a, I don't know what it is. It says the sacred salt was created with the intentions of aligning yourself with the energies of peace and tranquility before ritual work. As you sit with these na these natural energies, practice letting go of your worldly problems, focusing on the very simple beat of your heart. Work to be silent in all manners by being by being, knowing that you are still and silent to all of all incoming attacks of confusion and despair. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Okay, hold on. Work to be silent in all manners of being, knowing that you are still and silent in, to all incoming t attacks or confusions and despair. These practices allow us to connect to divine energies. We have enchanted this sacred salt with cedar wood and chamomile. It's chamomile. That's what I was smelling. As well as clover, chamomile, and plantain herbs. I love plantains. I don't know if plantain herbs are the same thing, but I love plantains plantain chips anyways. We've also included a special mixture of our regeneration magical oil from our personal cabinet of witchery in the making of the sacred salt. And then it always tells you at the end if you don't have a bath and you know you don't have one accessible or you have one but it doesn't work, um, you can put some of these in a like a tea bag and let it steep in the water um, and then you can like dump it over you to get the same effect as if you were to take a bath. That's a good tip. Um, and then we have our incense. Um, it is called Con Concordia Ritual Incense. It says, we have placed Concordia Ritual Incense sticks within this collection for you to burn near altars or to incorporate within your rituals. Concordia embodies the energies of harmony. It smells really good. Uh, unity and sympathy as the smoke of this incense wafts through your surroundings. Visualize the unity between you and your true intentions becoming more intimate and meaningful. This smell, like, it just smells witchy. I don't know how to explain it because like I, I told you before, if you watched any of these videos, they just smell witchy. And I don't know what the smell is and I can't put my finger on it. It's a flower. I know that. It's a flower, but I can't figure it out. I will eventually. And then I'll let you know. Okay, so then lastly, we have our herbs. And we have angelica root, feverfew, and flaxseed. And this is like ground flaxseed, which... Flaxseed, I need. I need flaxseed, actually. But in my diet, not, <laughs> not right now on my spell work. Okay, feverfew. 
A wonderful protection herb. Fever Few is a must-have in a witch's cabinet, commonly found growing within a home of practitioners. Fever Few provides safety and comfort during times of unease, chaos, confusion, and disharmony. Oh my gosh, I have Fever Few, and I was like, the other day I was thinking like my, if you guys have been following me on Instagram, and I know I'm going way over and way off topic, I'm living in a just a bubble of chaos. I need this to burn some of this. Need it. Um, place this herb within protection satchets to carry with you during challenging and uncomfortable times. Planetary connection, Venus, elemental connection, water, gender, masculine. It says it external and ritual use only. So do not eat it. Um, and I'm assuming probably do not burn it. I probably took it make a satchel. Sachet, a sachet, or how do you say it? Sachet? I'm not sure. I think I always butcher it. Angelica root is a multifunctional plant. It aids in, in some of the most common spells and rituals used today. Angelica root is a wonderful ingredient to include within herbal incense blends to rid your area of evil and negative spirits. Before beginning your ritual and spells, Angelica root has also been recommended to include within a bath to remove hexes or curses that may linger near. Planetary connection, sun, elemental connection, fire, and gender is masculine. External and ritual use only. Need this. Okay, flaxseed. This says external use and ritual only, so do not eat it. Even though you can get flaxseed at the store, this one is not meant to be eaten. I'm telling myself that. Um, it says, in addition to enhancing prosperity and abundance, flaxseed can be included within a variety of protection sachets to guard against psychic attacks or negative attachments. Sprinkle flaxseed around protection altars to bring additional potency to your ritual. Planetary connection, mercury, elemental connection, fire, and gender masculine. And that is what's in our September's Witch's Moon box. So, it was... A pretty darn good box if you ask me um but of course as always I will put in the the end a close-up of all the stuff that we get um, in this box so thank you guys for joining me on another unboxing of these boxes like I've said before these boxes I buy with my own money they do not send these to me for free I wish um, but I enjoy supporting witchy, witchy shops, witchy, you know, anything I can buy from because we really need more witchy stores. I swear we do. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you guys for sticking with me these last couple months. I know it's been rough for me. It's been hard. I'm trying to find my groove of things again um, after just the chaos of 2020. I am going to be also uploading a couple more videos later so just be on the lookout and if you guys like this video please comment like subscribe share if you haven't it just really helps me out a little bit so i hope you guys have a good day and blessed be and sunlight and shining moon balance of the dark and light hearken ye a witch's rune as we perform